In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your complete Control A-Series keyboard. Check it out. What's up, my name is Matthew Stratton. On this channel, I do set of videos, tutorials, and overviews, just like this one. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Let's go ahead and get right into this setup video for the complete control. Recently, I purchased the complete control A49. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna set that up. I wanna show you every part of the process. And the first thing we need to do is go ahead and connect our keyboard to our computer. So this cable here is the cable that did come with the complete control keyboard. So right here is the USB port. I'm gonna take this end of the USB port, plug it into there. It's only one way that it can go in, okay? And then I'm gonna take the other end of the USB port, plug it into the computer. Again, there's only one way it goes in, but you can see when I plug it in, all the lights start to come on on the keyboard. It is powered on. All right, so it's powered on. You can see it says the device is ready, so it automatically set it up. This is the Complete Control A49, and you can see it automatically set it up. So after that part of the setup is done, we need to go ahead and register our Complete Control with Native Instruments. And to do that is very simple. You need to find this card that came with your Complete Control. There should be a card taped to the box. Go ahead and take that card, and it gives you a website. It says Native Instruments Setup www.native-instruments.com forward slash setup dash control. So once you go to that, it's gonna forward you over to this website. Now you can see this website right here. This card does have your serial number on it, but your serial number is also on the back of your complete control. So you can also use that as well. But once you go ahead and get to this page, you need to download the native access. So I'm on a PC, so I'm gonna go ahead and click download. And in parentheses, it says Win because I'm using Windows. If you're on a Mac, you would download this one right here. Once that's finished downloading, you could go ahead and open that in the Downloads folder. So I'm just going to show in the folder. And then we need to go ahead and unzip it. So go ahead and right click on that and then select Extract All. You can see right there it says Extract All. That might take a few moments. Go ahead and extract that. Show Extracted Files. Now this is our native access installer. So let's go ahead and double click that. All right, so once that's chosen, we need to go ahead and run that. So I'm gonna run that. And we can see right here, it says, welcome to the Native Instruments Native Access Setup. So we need to go ahead and set this up. So click Next, and then go ahead and click Next. And then it's going to go ahead and start setting that up. And then it'll tell you you have successfully completed that. So we can go ahead and finish the setup. And once we're done setting it up, we could actually delete the install file if we wanted to but I'm just gonna go ahead and close the folder now. Okay, so let's look for native access now. It should be installed, so I'm gonna minimize this. And then right here on the desktop, it says native access. I'm going to double click that, and it's gonna ask if uh, I want to allow this to make changes to my device. I'm gonna say yes. So now that native access is downloaded and installed, what we can do is actually open up native access, all right? Once you open up native access, it's going to ask you to go ahead and log in using your native ID. Now, if you do not have a native ID, what you can do is actually register for one. So right here, it says create native ID account. If you do have a native ID account, you could just go ahead and log in, but if not, go ahead and click create new native ID account. And then you're gonna have to put in some information. Make sure the information you put in here is accurate because this is gonna be your native ID account and your serial number is gonna be attached to this account and you know all your software is gonna be attached to this account. So it's gonna be important that you're gonna have access to this email address in the future. So make sure you do use correct information here. So once you create an account and log in, you're gonna get taken to this page here. It says native access at the top. You can search your products. You can add a serial. So this is where you're gonna actually enter your serial number for your actual physical keyboard. And you can see right here, we have software, not installed, available updates, and installed products. Now what shows up here is gonna depend on what you actually purchase from Native Instruments. And they do have a lot of free stuff, so you can actually get a bunch of free stuff in here as well. But again, it's gonna depend on what you actually have registered to your account. So what I wanna do at this point is go ahead and add a serial. So what I wanna do is click that, and you can see we can add a serial number. Now, this is gonna be the number that is on the back of your complete control card. It is on the back of your actual physical keyboard as well, so if you did lose that card, you do have access to your serial number. But let's go ahead and type that serial number in now. 
Once you type it in, go ahead and click add serial. Once you go ahead and add that, you're going to get a screen that says you successfully registered your serial number. And then what you might have to do is go ahead and click this refresh button at the top. And once you click that refresh button, it's going to show you all the different stuff that actually comes with your complete control. So you do get a number of things that come with this. So now that it successfully has refreshed, you can see all the different products that do come with this. It comes with the Monarch, the Gentleman, Reactor Prism, Scarby Mark One, Complete Control Software, the Complete Start. And this is at the current time of this video, all right? Before you install your software, you need to be aware of where your software is going to go. You need to be aware of where your content library is going to go because all the stuff that's included takes a lot of room on your hard drive and you could actually use an external hard drive to load up your sounds. Now, if you don't want to change anything, you could just go ahead and click install all. It's going to install all this stuff for you. But let me show you something. So if you click over here, there's something called preferences. So go ahead and click preferences. So in your preferences, you have your file locations. This is going to be very important to know. Now I've done a couple modifications to my file locations. So you can look, this is my download location. It's just my downloads folder. There is the application location, which is just program files slash native instruments. Okay. Those are default locations. Now over here, I changed my location for my content library. The content library for your native instrument sample packs and stuff like that, are, it's like really large and it takes up a lot of space on your hard drive. So if you install all that on your regular C drive or your, you know, just your regular operating system drive, it's gonna take up a lot of space. Now you might not have enough space on that. So what I have done is I actually connected an external hard drive to my PC and then this way I can install the content onto the external hard drive. So for me to do that, all I did is hit browse. And once I hit browse, I went to, you know, that particular hard drive. I right clicked in here. I made a new folder, right? I clicked new folder right here. And then I named it native instruments library. I selected that folder by highlighting it and then pressed select folder. And then it shows up right there. Now I did change the location of my VST 64 location because I have my VST stored in one folder and you can see right there, that's where it's at. By default, it installs on a VST plugins 64 bit folder, but right here I actually changed it. I went to browse and this is the path that I chose. And again, if you go to the VST folder, I created a native instruments folder inside of my VST folder and this way, and this way in Ableton Live, whenever I go ahead and pick this particular folder, it's just going to have native instruments in its own little separate folder inside of the Ableton Live. And it's going to be nice and organized for me. So you need to know where you actually are installing your VSTs. This way, whenever you go and find your VSTs in your software, they're all in that folder. In this way, you know, you have access to them. Now you don't have to use the path that I use. That's just where my VSTs happen to be located. So you can go ahead and save your preferences. And now you're ready to go ahead and install all this stuff. And you can see on here, it tells you how much room it is gonna take for this stuff to install. So this block base right here is gonna take 16 megabytes. And if I wanted to install that, I would simply click install. And you can see it's gonna start downloading it. Once it's done downloading, it's actually going to install that for me. Now you can see it says installing and you can see now it says installed, install successful blocks base was successfully installed. And I can go through each one of these. I can go through this expansions selection and install that. All right. And you can see it's going to go ahead and download it and it's going to go ahead and install it when it's done downloading. Now, one of the things you do want to make sure that you install is the complete control right here. Okay. So what this is going to enable your actual physical keyboard do, to do is to interface with some of these particular synthesizers and sounds. This way you have direct access to the perimeter so you can shape the sounds how you want. You're going to be able to browse through different sounds with the keyboard and you're going to be able to do that with the complete control software. Now, if you don't want to go one by one and install these, you know, manually one by one, you can click install all. So what I'm going to do now, instead of going one by one, I'm going to click install all. Now you can see this one went right into downloading. This one's waiting. Okay. This one's waiting. All the other ones are waiting. So basically once this is done downloading, installing, it's just going to move on to the next one. All right. So after I pressed install all, it took a little while. So I went and grabbed some lunch. I came back, everything's installed. So what I want to do now is go ahead and open these devices and see if it works properly. 
So once everything is installed, you can go ahead and close out of complete access. And a good thing to do at this point is to go ahead and open the standalone software. Make sure that your software does read where your content library is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if you look right here, we got a few things. So we can click on complete control. So we went ahead and scanned all the VSTs and now it's giving me this screen here. It says, welcome to complete control. And then right here, we can actually set our preferences. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my particular audio interface, pick whatever audio interface that you're running. And we got our MIDI here. So go ahead and click on your complete control right there. Here is your library. So I'm going to go ahead. All right, so now once we see our preferences, we can go through the startup if we want. All right, and then when you're done, you can end the tour. If you click here, we can see our instruments, right? But you can also do that over here. If you press browser, we can go through our instruments. Um, we can go through our presets right here. All right, so I loaded up a preset. All right, and we can play that particular sound, whatever sound this may be. Okay, and then let's go ahead and load a different sound. If we're on the browser here, we could actually browse browse through different sounds. So say we like this one, if I push this in, it's gonna actually load that up. You know, we can play it. Now up here, we can actually change the parameters. And everything looks like it is working, so we're all set up in that regard. And if you want to see those macros, you can click over here. It's going to show you the different macros you're actually modifying right there. And then if you want to scroll through the next set of macros, you can hit this arrow. Okay. And then it's going to give you the next set. So each of these knobs correlate with whatever's going on on the screen up there. There you go. We got full functionality of this. It didn't take too long to go ahead and install and boom, complete control right there set up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, remember to give it a thumbs up below. And if you want more setup videos and videos about how to make music, consider subscribing to the channel. I appreciate you for doing that. And you know, continue creating music. I appreciate you for watching. Till next time, we'll talk soon. Peace out, y'all.